Our previous video was the satellite scene selection. I now have the satellite scene I want to look at. I can actually go back and see it. Um, I could select a different one if I want to analyze, but I will not do that right now. And like I said, I could clear that out. But to actually do something more further with it, we go into the analyze. So there's a couple different pieces to this. Um, one of the main pieces that is a type of analysis you want to run. There is near infrared, NDVI red, NDVI green, and then multiband. Each has their own different uh, needs and wants and, and things that you can do with it, even within our own system. Near infrared is looking at more of the overall vegetative biomass, the thickness of the crop, and kind of how it also relates into the soil. You can dig down into that a little bit more with near infrared. Um, it's not for everything, uh, but it kind of gives a overall, uh, it's thicker here. Um, there's more light reflected from here. And we use that kind of to dive into the soils, maybe make more of a, a base map for uh, future applications, maybe into fall soil sampling, uh, things like that. NDVI Red is going to look more at the plant health, plant stress of the crop. Um, and then NDVI Green is looking at more of the chlorophyll response, so more of how it relates to uh, potential nitrogen response in the crop. Uh, you're going to see uh, a different indice there. In season, uh, I would look more at red and green. If you're looking in the past and wanting to do maybe a uh, bring that map into some more of a fertilizer application or zone soil test sampling, I would look more at the near infrared. Um, naturally, they all have their different uses and it's good to look through all of them. Now there's also one called multiband. That is kind of a base analysis where we can later on classify the different images as near infrared, red, or green. And we can look at different zones and end up merging them or changing the indices and the numbers on them as needed. Um, it just kind of depends on where you want to go from here. Um, I'm just going to do a simple NDVI green on this. And from here, I can then choose the different colors I want. Um, there's the SatShot 31 and the SatShot 8 uh, that uses more of a kind of a generalized color uh, scheme that has been used for years and other systems use it as well. We just call it under our own designation. Uh, then we have these red to green. Now these are more of uh, the highs are green and the lows are red and yellows in between. Um, you won't be able to see the breakdown as much, but some people want, don't want the other colors in there because it might confuse somebody because some image from one to another, um, which I'll show a little later, it might show very red and blues all over and it doesn't look like it's good, but it's all about the colors and how they're relative to each other. So I'm just going to do a stat shot 31 and um, go for it. I can change the amount of zones that have the same color pattern if I want, but I would start high and not go low because if you go too low on the zones right away, say you want to be end up at four or five or six zones, it will actually kind of blob the imagery together. So I'll, I'll give an instance of this. I'll just say, I want four zones with this color of this. And we're gonna analyze this and, and it might showcase, it just depends on, on the field and the image representative if it will kind of blob the zones together. And it's hence why we usually start at a higher number of zones and even with different color tables. So it's one thing, definitely play with those parts and see where you're comfortable and what you like since it'll be very dependent on um, how you want to move forward and what you want to do with your maps. It's um, we, we give all those options so that for depending on the industry, you know, mainly agriculture, but um, you may want different uh, part of that. So now that we have that analysis done, what you'll see is a little red dot under data sets. So the analysis is just the analyzing pieces of the imagery. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to satellite. I'm going to clear the scene off so I can get back to the background imagery. I'm going to go to the data set tab. And now you can see here, if I double click on it, um, that data set came out. Now, fortunately, under this field, just doing four zones, it actually came out kind of nice. Um, I have a, a spreader on the side where I can, I can kind of see the patterns and take off the transparency as I want. 
um, to see how that matches up. But now let me show you in comparison if I, some of the previous imagery I have under list here, um, I have a multitude of different images. I can actually look next to them and compare. Uh, one of this is NIR, this is N NDVI red, this is NDVI green. I can see kind of how they compare the different types of satellites. The L designation is a Landsat, so it's a different satellite. The S is Sentinel, for instance. Um, so some of these have more patterns in them. Uh, for instance, if I go uh, back to the data set itself um, and select on it, I can open up this button on the left here and I can see my, my four zones and the acres associated to them. Um, I can go back into the list and look at the exact same date that I did for a different image. Um, if I can find one here that I, I ran before, I'm just going to zoom down to see if I can find one of the same satellite. Um, I believe one of these is close to it. I'll go back to the top here. So we have um, this one right here is the exact same date, but I did a 31 zone map. So I'm going to unclick that. It's just a matter of, of double clicking. Um, and actually, I brought this down, I believe, even as well uh, from a previous one. Because um, what you can do on here is either pick the zones you want. Um, I'll even bring in another one here just to try to highlight. So here's a 31 zone. So this one was a 5. Here was that uh, uh, potential other one. But this is from a different year, different satellite. Um, I'm going to undo this. I'll select this. And I can select multiple ones if I want to all showcase them on here. Um, so as you might see, it doesn't look like there's 31 zones here, but there actually is from the different little patterns. Some of it's really tough to see. So um, it's a thing to play around with what you would want to do. Um, but the piece that also brings in, in more to this is this multiband. Um, I will I'll showcase that here quick. I'll just select on the multiband. It looks white, but there's actually more data uh, behind it. Um, so I'm going to turn off that one. I will select uh, the multiband. It kind of looks gray and white, but from here, I can actually hit classify, and now I can actually go through these different zones and see them. I can switch through NDVI red. NDVI green, I can go into NIR and I can see how those different patterns change. I can actually merge zones. Um, so it's as simple as selecting multitude of zones, uh, bringing them together and just merging them since um, that might turn those little areas gray. Now those are very small acreages. So I'm just going to go in here even further and merge even more of them. So some of those tools will depend. So you see the grays in here. So there's a lot of different patterns just in that area. Uh, but what you want to do is just um, go as you need on here um, to merge certain zones together. And this might even determine what you see in the background imagery as you're running the slider. Um, if there's a slough or some water hole or a rock pile around something, um, you can change these different min-max features. Um, I'd say for the novice, I wouldn't deal with that too much. Uh, there's a whole nother side to that. But you can also change the amount of zones. As you see, it shows here. I can change it to another color table if I want. Uh, so more of that red green. Um, I can increase my zones slightly there if I want as well from what I had merged. Um, so using that multiband gives you more options than what you can do in classify and show. And also just showing a simple histogram there and looking at the acres of each zone. Um, those are some of the nice features of this classify and actually using the multi-band feature that was done in the analysis. So you can either do those individually one by one or you can just do the multi-band as itself and save uh, the different analysis as you go so that you can add these um, into the list. I'm gonna take these off here quick um, to give you idea of that. So with the list, I could save each one of those. I could do one multiband and I could have potentially 10 or 15 or whatever uh, different uh, maps from that. 
So that is one of the nice features with multi-band. You get everything that you want. Now in our Landscout app, it works a little differently, um, but it's still a similar, it's kind of a similar process, but you can select them more one by one and, and do some of those same merge features. Uh, but naturally, if I want to delete one of these, I can go in here and delete them and export and select. I will get into uh, some of those other features uh, in the next video. Uh, but these are the basics of analyzing and how they associate to the data set itself. Um, like for instance, if I just double click, it shows up there. I can add a multitude of those around here to kind of go back and forth between the different images and naturally I can sort them differently as well as they come in. Uh, but those are the basics of an analyzing an image and a data set. And I'll go into a little more depth on what some of these different areas could mean and how they relate to exporting and things like that in our next video.